Robots are coming, Optimus is coming, who knows, maybe even Boston Dynamics figure and a whole bunch of others are coming, but uh, what does it actually mean and how close are they? Are they actually right around the corner or do we have another five, ten years to go before they're actually doing meaningful, useless stuff? I brought on John Twig to help me think about it and figure out what's what in the robotics field. I'm Brian. Welcome to Future Aza. Oh, 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 oh. You could so knock me down with a robot. I, I could. I could. Have you seen that video yet? No. There was the racing robots. Uh, oh, yes. The video just today. And was it Figures Robot? It literally careered off, hit the back of somebody and knocked them flying. Woof. So they, they were fine, and it got up and it carried on. So this it's is cheating. Why if your head is so aerodynamic that the whole thing is an aeroport? I can't mm. compete with that. So we're seeing lots of progress, but when it comes to their version of the last mile or knocking the nines off in terms of the full self driving, I think we've both said in the past that it might be easier to put Optimus in because it's not traveling at 60 or 80 miles an hour. It doesn't weigh two tons, but it's still heavy enough to fall on a child. Are we still yes. going to have those issues? And as we were talking about factories, I was wondering how much Optimus might run the factories. And of course you're saying, well, yeah, but it doesn't take much to go wrong and a whole car line stops. Yes. So can you get to the point where it's actually useful? Is, is well, so question. What we've done is we've gone from stick figures to pretty good drawings to pretty good paintings. But what we're trying to get to is photorealistic paintings and mm. the gap of skill between a pretty good painting and photorealistic is photoreal. I mean, it's a hundred percent. It is. Yes. Uh, and if, and if that's the analogy we're using, looking at Optimus 2.0 scooping popcorn, we mentioned this in a previous video, mm. it is not useful. It takes two, three people to run it, and it moves at a pace, which is disappointing isn't the right word. It's, it's a novelty. It's a fun novelty. If it was working at that speed, but autonomously, like completely hands off, no one watching it, no one in charge of it, it knows when to go plug itself in, it can uh, do all those things, I would say that's a really good demo. Now, what, we, what we've got is chat GPT moments. Right. Chat GPT moment of, of around two years ago or so now wasn't the beginning of chat GPT. No. There were various versions behind before that that were actually pretty useless. Uh, mm -hmm. They were interesting examples, but it didn't grab the public's attention. It didn't achieve. Uh, but suddenly with chat GPT, people say, wow, this is amazing. We'll probably see the same thing with the robots. Uh, the, the rate of change of the large language models and all of the AI in general is going so fast that we will see much more powerful models 10 times as fast within a year. We're also, in terms of Optimus, looking at AI5, the next chip that will live in Optimus and, and the cars, being 5 to 10 times as fast. They're designing those chips with AI as well to speed every single stage of the design up. So it's going to be one of these S-curves that we've got the bottom of the S-curve and nobody's taking much notice and saying, is this actually going to work? But we will at some point hit a point that in certain environments it's going to be useful and it's going to start doing real jobs and then it's just going to fly and it's going to be replacing jobs everywhere. So let's talk about things that have already reached that moment. Uh, large language models do really good at a lot, a lot of tasks. Maybe not perfect, certainly not perfect in every aspect. Uh, maybe if you asked your car to teach you Cherokee, it would, it would not do a very good job. Uh, but that's not something I expect it to do. It doesn't need to be that perfect for my purposes, for commercial purposes. I and would, the analogy would, here is that what the large language models are really good at is telling you things which are really well known. There's lots of information yes. on them, and it can pull it just out of the internet, uh, make it concise, repackage it. There you go. That's a really well-known piece of information. You might not yes. have known it, but it was out there. And it was out there in multiple ways. And if I've shifted from 
I've shifted from using Grok to learn new things yeah. uh, that are obscure. I would try and give it obscure puzzle challenges and it would mm -hmm. fall on its face. I ask it common things like, mm -hmm. you know, GDP or, uh, you know, who was that actor in that thing? It knows those. So the question is, if you go in McDonald's or wherever it might be, we've even got Wendy's here in the UK, I spotted the other day, oh. that you don't need a robot that can do Boston uh, somersaults, all those kind of things. It doesn't need to teach you physics. So there's going to right. become a point when those robots can do some jobs as yes. good. So the analogy is the chat GPT moment doesn't need to be a professor of physics in a robotics. Most people's jobs are mundane. Sure. So now Within let's talk. Domain. Yeah. So we can agree that the processors are pretty good, but we'll get better. We can agree that the coding language it uses to interpret the world is pretty good, but it will get better. But now let's talk about the embodiment because mm -hmm. I haven't seen evidence that the actuators are at a point to compete with humans. And I don't mean humans who are mm -hmm. highly skilled. I mean, average humans. Do we know what kind of durability we're getting out of these joints and sockets and whatnot. Um, do we know, you know, how, how long is this hand going to last? Mine heals. Theirs do not. Um, are they going to be needing to replace, you know, are the finger pads going to be consumable items? So let's, I mean, start there. The demos you've seen, do they rival humans? No, in terms of flexibility, but they're doing some tasks. But I think the key here is that Tesla is the manufacturer. We're seeing lots of Chinese demos doing all sorts of various things. But I would then question, like if you sent for batteries over the internet from China a few years ago, you've got to be really careful you didn't set fire to yourself. Yes, I think we'll see the same thing with the robots. The robots might run for two hours. They might be dangerous. Uh, I think this is perhaps why... Tesla's not, and Elon backed off those early ramp numbers for this year and next year uh, because they're hitting these challenges and working their way through them. Uh, but he's not backed off saying we're going to have Optimus at all. He's not pushing it back lots of years. It's just that, yeah, we're not going to hit the 10,000 in factories this year. Uh, maybe it's going to be next year. Uh, so I suspect we're going to see robots appearing in various places that aren't wonderful uh, more and more over the next year or two. But we're going to see that Tesla Optimus doing things and being, how long does a Model S last? I saw one had done a million miles the other day. Mm. Tesla yeah. engineered things properly. That I think that will be the difference. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Tesla's a lot more hesitant to rush a product to market than they have been in the past, even with the Model S, uh, definitely with the Model S, but even with the Model 3, I think there have been uh, some gaps there. Do So how soon do you think we will we, see? We, we saw Optimus dancing, didn't we? To me, that shows yeah. that it might have been not programmed, but it had been reinforcement learned, So, and then it was being replayed. But it shows that those uh, actuators, and Elon you know, said that was 2.5, not three that's right. not the new optimus the new optimus right. will be the one that's got the internally designed from scratch actuators so i think we'll see a step up and we've not seen it yet okay so i'm going to tell you where you've restored my confidence i have only seen uh 2.0 and earlier in person mm. i've seen 2.0 functioning at the tesla diner i've seen earlier ones not functioning just on display in showrooms that's not a robot if it doesn't move it's a mannequin nobody tell dan he'll go crazy uh, but busting in there like the kool-aid guy oh yeah but there is um but i did not get an invitation to we robot i did not get to see those robots in action mm. um so I suppose, and I do know that the robots that were shown on 1010, which is now already a long time ago, are primitive compared to what's in the lab today. And I know because I've talked to people in the lab. I've talked to people. Yeah. yeah that's I was going to say, we've got Lego blocks. Mm -hmm. 
We already know that Tesla's the master of real world AI. The cars are driving themselves and it's looking really good. Mm -hmm. But there are two very big differences between the cars and the robots. Three dimensional space. It's through and you're living it's... in that and you've got an incredibly complex body to move. So you've got massively more complex body to control and massively mm -hmm. more ways of failing. Yes. As in you fall over. Right. Uh, you miss. Whereas a Bonking car into something. Yeah. Bonking into something is the least of Optimus's concerns. Yes. And of course, the other aspect is that cars, even though they're engineering them really well, we've got multiple types of actuators in ways that have never been seen before. Tesla, have, with the car uh, motors, they've iterated them and made them much better, but the actuators, there was nothing they could use on the market. No. So no. they're having to yeah. completely create a new kind of engineering almost. So we've got yes. those two blocks that were completely missing. Uh, once those two things appear, the actuators are good enough and the balance and that low-level control is good enough, we've already got the high-level intelligence that will have them cooking you dinner for 10 and doing the shopping. So they've just got to focus on those two missing chunks. And then, I mean, it's like you're trying to build just, Lego, but just. you haven't got some of the bricks. You can't do yeah. anything. It just falls over all the time, literally, in this case. Yes, I fear that just is doing too much heavy lifting we're making soup and we're just missing two ingredients yes. but one of them is water uh yes. i don't think that's going to be a soup i think we we have i i've seen analysts and also people on youtube who are you know the retail analysts having very lofty expectations even going back to the initial release where people thought that the very first one we saw was going to be more advanced yes. than what we've seen even today yeah. And uh, I think we need to temper our expectations. I think we need to, like FSD, wrap our heads around the mm. scale of this complex problem. It mm. is a massive undertaking. We are trying to do something that has literally never been done before. And, but I uh, think the dancing is there. I think that particular <laughs> block is getting close. It's a matter of integrating that into the higher level processes. What we haven't seen yet is other than the hand just moving its fingers at Wii Robot. Have we seen it since? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure we have much. I don't, uh, I don't think so. No. So those new actuators, that's a real physical hard challenge for, for the uh, engineers. Uh, yeah. I think that's the bit, as you were saying, about will the pads work? How, that's something that what will the durability be like? But yeah. I think we'll see some really good demos in six months' time. Guys, we got to wrap this up. I got too much other stuff to do. I'm a very, very busy and very important person. As you all know, that's why you're here. Hey, if you made it this far, if you're not subscribed, please do. Only about half of you are subscribed. If all of you subscribed, I could stop asking. Uh, it really helps out the channel. There are other ways to help out. You can uh, help me out on Patreon as a patron on X as a subscriber, as on YouTube as a channel member. All of those tremendously helpful. That's how I'm able to go on these adventures. That's how I'm able to dedicate such an outsized percentage of my life to research. It's uh, just what I do. So guys, uh, uh, you know, leave your comments in them comments. Leave it. Leave it. You must. And everybody else, stay tuned, stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots uh, when you arrive, I guess. Thank you, Brian. Wonderful to be here.